Let me tell you why you need OBS Studio as a YouTuber, content creator, and a creative entrepreneur. You want to show yourself to the audience. If you're shy, share your screen to guide your viewers through some complex stuff like this Google Sheet. You hit this, then you type epic, and then ain't that adorable. You can also do both so you beautiful people can see your favorite YouTuber and these adorable creatures at the same time. If you're not sold, then say sorry to fluffers and cuts. Hello beautiful people, Josh V. Castro here and I'll be showing you how to record yourself so everyone can see your beautiful face. How to record your screen so everyone can see your you know beautiful screen and how to record your screen and yourself at the same time and how to get in this circle or whatever shape you want it to be for convenience sake there will be timestamps or chapters uh, throughout the video it's also listed here so if you have something specific that you want to go to you go there all right it's easy as that so step one you're gonna want to download obs studio if you don't already have obs studio that is but if you already do then you're gonna have to you want to skip this step all right so you want to go to obsproject.com that's their official website to download obs studio if you're on windows mac OS, linux choose the right one to get the latest version for us we're going to be downloading windows because that's the platform i'm using so after that it's going to download here on the bottom corner then you're just gonna wait for that to finish. So once that's done, you're gonna just simply click it right here when you can click it like this. And then it'll go boom like this, say yes, you wanna do that. And then you wait for a second and then here you go. So welcome to OBS Studio 25.08 setup. Then after this, you're just gonna follow the whole setup process. Just click next, yes. And then once it's complete, you wanna hit finish. And then it should open up at the same time. Just wait for it. Just wait for it. It's gonna any second now. You will have successfully installed OBS Studio on your system with it. So as you can see here, it will ask you if you would like to run the auto configuration wizard. You can also manually configure the, your settings by clicking the settings button in the main window. You can say yes, because we're going to change those anyway. It's good. Actually good to have a baseline of what your computer can handle because it depends the settings highly depend on you know what processor you have you have an i3 below or you have an i7 or i9 and there you go so you want to optimize for streaming recording is secondary you want to optimize for recording i will not be streaming that's what you want to do you want to because you know us youtubers creators unless you do plan to stream then i recommend to get the first but if this is primarily for recording yourself like what i'm doing right now click this and then just hit next oh it actually tells you all right so your current canvas is this and then either 60 or all right, we'll go 60 for now. This actually is a really, you know, it's a, it, it walks you through. And then here's your final results. You can apply these settings, hardware, NVENC, high quality, medium file size. Interesting. 920 by 1080, both canvas and output. FPS is 60. All right, just apply these settings. We're going to change those anyway. You can keep those if you want. It's a good reference to see what your computer is capable of. So for part three of OBS Studio, we're going to be talking about the parts of OBS Studio. So this, this right here, this thing is your main canvas. Actually, I'm going to remove myself from the picture so you can actually see everything clearly without me being in the way. All right, so I'm going to assume you can still see everything if I'm up here. All right, so yeah, we should be fine. All right, so this is your, this is your, what do you call this? This is your preview window where you see everything that you're working with right now that's live. So that's that. Uh, here on the bottom left, you got scenes. Uh, your scenes are basically like a picture, all right? So you can change between scenes. You can add, we'll, we'll go into that later, but just think of a scene as a, a final picture or a final video frame. Your sources, think of sources as layers of elements. All right, so you got your text, then you got your camera, then your background. Then probably you can even add music here in their sources. Then your sources and your scenes are different. Uh, your sources are different for each scene, so you can control that. You have your audio mixer. This is where you mix your audio. So right now, as you can see, we have desktop audio running right now based on my voice. And then you have your microphone. We're going to set that up so that actually starts working. You have your scene transitions from fade to cut. Ideally, you want to go cut especially if you're not streaming just to keep things nice and neat so that when you do finish your recording it'll be actually cleaner to edit in your editing software of choice 
Then you have your controls, you know, start streaming, start recording. That's a very important button. Studio mode, settings, exit. We'll go more into that later. But just a quick uh, disclaimer. Uh, no, yes. Okay, we can't show you that right now. So now we're going to be moving on to step four of OBS Studio, which is setting up, setting it up. All right, this is really basic. This is really simple. So we want to go up here, file, and then go down to settings. All right. So here in settings, we've got general. You want, you can choose actually from four, three teams, four, four teams. You got Acre, which is this nice blue and dark, dark, dark blue thing that's actually cool all right uh we got dark mode which is the default mode which is just you know black and gray tones hues we got rachne which is uh interesting has that skyish pastel blue and pink theme going on there's these are actually and their system this is the probably the the original default default which what which we all know and love at one point if you're a veteran so we're just gonna stick with dark mode which is default because that's probably the mode you're gonna be in right now so just to keep things simple for you and not overwhelm you all right so we got output the everything here can stay the same uh, snap can stay at 10 hide cursor these the, just leave those alone you want to go to stream no you don't here <laughs> you want to go to output yes all right so in output output mode we're going to go advanced because that's what we are we are advanced users we're going to skip streaming go directly to recording all right so for your recording path i recommend you actually create a recording path to your desktop uh, but for my case i actually have a recording path that is quite complex so we're going to go there really quick so this is my recording path i actually record them by date dates actually no month so right now we're on the August of 2020. So this is where I'm going to put all my recordings for August 2020. So that's where the recording path of my videos are going to be ending up in. Uh, generate file name without spaces. I actually like spaces. Uh, so here, recording format. I actually recommend MKV in the event that something does happen. There's a power outage. Your computer just dies automatically. Your files will be saved. If you've been recording for two hours and then it just cuts off from zero minutes to two hours, it's safe. Because if you do MP4, all right, it's a disclaimer. It's not. It's not gonna. It's just gonna be. It's gonna be bricked. It's not gonna work. All right. It's not gonna work. Audio track. I like uh, checking all six. You can keep audio track one available. It doesn't. It does matter if you want to record different audio tracks. But for my use case, I'm going to just record one audio track. Uh, encoder. So depending on what you use, if you have a GeForce graphics card or an NVIDIA graphics card, you want to go with NVENC new, H.264. New, there is two versions, um, which is not available now. And then there's X264. X264 is your CPU's graphics card. Uh, but if you're running an AMD graphics card like uh, Radeon, then this should be different. Then I still recommend you choose that because it's nice and more powerful, they say. Custom extra settings, that's none. So for your rate control, CBR is 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 not good <laughs> anymore. It's, uh, it's expensive. By expensive, I mean it's heavy. It does keep the quality consistent, but then it it's not as consistent as you want it depending on the bitrate you choose. So I recommend going CQP. All right, CQP is 0 to 30. But C 0 to 14, that's basically lossless. So don't go below 14. So don't do 13. No, just just go 14. That's your minimum. But remember, the lower the number, the higher the quality. So the higher the quality, the bigger the file size. If I can explain if that, yeah, that actually sums it up in a nutshell. Uh, ideally, you want to stick between the ranges of 14 to 22. That's a fine range. You can do 30 if you're just recording draft uh, draft sessions. So that way the file size will be smaller. And then it's still clear, but it's not as clear as a 14 or a 20. So 14, 16, 18, 20, 22. Those are fine for me. I'm going to do 18. Uh, for your keyframe intervals, you can set that to zero, which is auto. And so that, you know, OBS Studio will do that for you. Preset quality, max quality performance. Uh, depending on your system, uh, I have an i7, so I'm going to choose max quality. If you have an i3 below, 
uh, I choose quality. If you have a Pentium, then probably just, you know, performance would be fine. Uh, for profile, I would choose high. Just keep it at high. High is a good, high is a good place to be at. Then for audio, here we go. Wait, uh, audio here. So audio here, you want to keep everything at 320, okay? 320 is a good place to put your audio at. It's at the best. It's, it gives you the best quality. They say audio is half the battle. So we're going to do that. Replay buffer, we're not going to enable that because we are not streaming. Uh, we'll, I'll make a separate video on that if you guys want. Audio, so depending on your microphone, uh, for instance, we're, that will determine your sample rate. So for my case, open sound and then here in recording, you can actually go to properties on your microphone. I have an ATR USB microphone. Go to advance. Go to advance and then you can see here it's a default format. Uh, it does have both of 44,100 and 48,000. Uh, that's the DVD quality. You want to choose the higher one because it's better and it's DVD quality. So hit OK, OK, and then that means your sample rate is 48,000. The program must be restarted for these settings to take effect. So once we're done with these settings, we'll restart OBS Studio so that these settings will take effect. For desktop audio, choose... I recommend actually choosing your desktop audio. So for me, it's speakers, real tech, high definition. Uh, and then for your main microphone, yeah, I cho recommend you to choose that as well. Don't leave it on default because you know you never know when you change your microphone in settings and then you forget. So it's actually good to actually have OBS Studio remember these settings. And you have, if you have other different mic settings, um, you can add those. But normally you just have one, one desktop audio and one mic setting. For your meters, that's that's fine. For advanced monitoring, adva monitoring, monitoring device is quite simple. You just choose. Uh, for me, I have a Logitech G93 gaming headset, which is this this right here. So I can actually monitor my my voice through this, which is really cool. And that's that's that. Uh, you can also disable this if you want. Disable window auto. That just keep that. Just keep that. All right, so for video, so we're good here. Yeah, we're good here. So for video, your base canvas is basically your monitor. So if you have a 4K monitor or if you have a 1080p monitor, then it should be here. It actually shows you what is the highest setting. So right now it's at 1920 by 1080. But since I have an ultra wide monitor, it can actually go all the way up to 2560 by 1080. And then it can downscale to these resolutions that, you know, it actually auto adjust the aspect ratio so for our use case we're gonna actually just stick to 1920 by 1080 and then for filtering since you're not really downscaling if these both are the same then i recommend just leaving it as is at bicubic you can also leave it at the best lens sauce sharpen scaling at 36 samples that is fine as well but if you have a slower pc then i recommend dropping this down to at bilinear uh but yeah, fast is but blurry if scaling. So if you're not scaling, it's not going to be blurry. So we're going to go Lance Cost. Lance Cost. All right, so for FES, FPS value, 60 is fine. 60 is the new 30. Uh, if you're doing film, then I suggest 24 or 29.97. Uh, for YouTube, 60 is fine. It's, it's, it's really fine. All right, so for hotkeys, so that's that. Hotkeys... Uh, I recommend setting up a hotkey for recording. Uh, mine is Control Shift R and stop recording. It's this, it's gonna be the same. And then for pause will be Control Shift P, and for unpause recording. Yes, there is a pause button in OBS Studio. Then after that, you can set up other hotkeys if you want. Uh, if you want a, another video on hotkeys, I can make one if you want. Hit that like button. General priority above normal. It's nice to have OBS Studio above normal, but not all the way up high because you want other programs eating into the uh, your CPU. For video, there's probably only one for you, so choose that. For your color format, leave it as is. And but for your color space, you're gonna want to play with 709 or 601. Normally, I prefer 709. And then for your color range, keep this at full because it gives you the full color range. Uh, so they say. All right, for file name formatting, I'll do a separate video on this because this actually does get tricky. See all that? You can actually customize your 
file name formatting if that's something you're into. You can even add uh, tags like OBS Studio so that all the videos under the this recording will have OBS Studio at the front so that you don't have to go through your files and say, oh, what was this video about? Oh, that was that. But then with this here, it's going to be, oh, this is about OBS Studio. But remember, every time you change uh, your project, make sure to change the file name formatting. Uh, but for now, we're just going to leave that as OBS Studio because that's what we're working on right now. Uh, overwrite files ex that exist. Now, automatically remux the MP4. Yes, you want to automatically remux the MP4 because remember we're gonna we're in mkv mkv needs to be remuxed you can't edit mkv so mind you yeah mkv unless you're in mp4 it will yeah it will be fine but we're using mkv so you want it to be automatically remuxed to mp4 that way your your life is easy Replay buffer, yes, that's fine. Just keep that at default. Everything here is at default. And then there you guys have it. That is settings. Just hit apply. Okay. And then OBS Studio needs to be restarted. Do you want to restart now? Then just hit yes. So moving on to step five, we're going to be doing scenes. All right. So for scenes, we're going to do three scenes for now. Uh, for the first scene, we're going to do camera. So we're actually going to rename this. You can actually just rename it by right clicking, rename, and then just, you know, full camera scene this is your full camera scene we're also going to make another scene which is just going to be your screen capture only scene and then we're going to also do a third scene like i said in the beginning of this video screen capture plus uh camera with with mask we'll, we'll just say we'll just with camera and i'll explain how to add the mask filter later so we're gonna start off with full camera so these are scenes like i said uh these are like your your pictures i guess that's how i described it because you can switch between them and we'll start with full camera so full full camera we're gonna add a source the source is gonna be the camera so we're gonna go here we're gonna click, click the plus sign and then where, where it says video capture device there's see these all, all these options these uh, we're gonna i'm gonna do a separate video on that uh, soon, but for now we're gonna add a video capture device, which is your DSLR, your webcam, your phone. If you know how to hook up your phone, you can do that. All right, so we're gonna create new because we have nothing existing yet. So like what what I like to do is I like to name it camera, open brackets, and what camera I'm using because there's scenarios where you can actually use multiple cameras. So for this one, we're gonna use camera Brio. All right, so there there it's added. Then you're gonna actually have to set it up so for device you're gonna look for the camera in my case it's a logitech brio which is this then right there so you can see it hi yo what's up uh, and then for the resolution device default we're gonna actually change this to the custom especially for the logitech if you have a logitech scene in 20 or it's action live cam i recommend going to custom so that you can actually in uh you know set it up properly with the highest possible settings that you can get to attain the best quality you can get all right so for resolution this can actually go all the way up to 4k but since we're on a 1080p canvas i recommend sticking with a 1080p uh resolution for this setup so that way it's uh, it actually matches the canvas resolution so there's no downscaling and then for your frames you want to match your frames to the frames you set up in settings so for us we set it up to 60 so we're gonna set this to 60 that's why I also chose 1080p because if you go up to 4k uh, for Logitech Brio it caps at 30 and then for video format you can just pick any any is fine color space you're gonna do 709 and then for color range full just like we did in settings so that it matches the whole the whole it just it's just consistent we, we want to stay consistent so that there's no conflicts that we want to uh, there, uh, yeah get it okay cool <laughs> all right and then that's pretty much it so okay then there you have your full cam then you can just sit down and then talk to the camera start your youtube career your youtube journey being a content creator a creative entrepreneur and then there you go so that is scene one the full camera scene so for scene two we're gonna do a screen capture only so screen capture only is really straightforward you just hit the plus sign and then we go all the way to window capture 
that is different from display capture. Window capture captures only a specific display, while display capture captures the entire display, including anything you see OBS sees, basically. So we'll just name it display capture and then hit OK. And then there, you can choose the display if you have multiple monitors. There will be a list here for now. I only have one. So we're going to choose this display capture cursor. OK. So as you can see, uh, there's some spill because this, my cat, my monitor is a ultra wide, which is 21 by 9. And then this canvas is a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So we, it's, uh, we just simply center it like this. Although normally I am set up to actually capture two by one aspect ratio because that's the, I'll make a video on that. It's not important right now, but what you know right now is that if you're running a 1080p monitor, this should be fine, technically. If you want to crop it down, you can. And then there's also another trick that I want to teach you guys how to crop. So you see these lines, you don't want to see this because see, I'm editing in Adobe Premiere right now. Uh, you can simply hold Alt and then, or Command on Mac, and then you hit these things and they'll turn green and then you can crop it. That's an easy way to crop. So you can hide that. And then you can do that to the other side. Hold it down because see if you don't if you don't hold Alt or Command down, it'll actually uh, resize it, keeping its aspect ratio though. So that's a good thing. We don't want that. We want to crop this so that that's hidden and then perfect. And if we want to fit this on the screen, we can actually just fit it right there. It'll actually clip and then center it like so, and then there that should be perfect. So now we're actually capturing OBS because it's seeing the screen. So if I do that, it'll you see it's it's now capturing. Uh, this it's, it's capturing Chrome, so that's perfect. That's cool. And now it's not. All right. So that that's the screen capture. So I, I, anything you do, the OBS will see it. Now for screen capture plus camera, this is the scene that we're gonna that I think you probably all have been waiting for. All right. So uh, let's start off with adding a screen capture. So we're gonna go to display capture. Add existing because you already created one in the previous scene. Display capture, okay. And then you're, we're gonna actually have to set this up again. But if you don't want to set this up again, you can actually delete this. Yes. Go back to screen capture only. Right click here, hit copy. Go back here and then add. No, no, no. Paste reference. Go back to the paste reference and then there. You don't have to do the whole cropping and resizing thing again. It's the exact same as here. Perfect, right? We're gonna do the same for full camera. So we're gonna go here, all right? And then we're gonna go copy, go back to screen capture plus camera. We're gonna paste reference. And then, see, like I said before, remember, sources are like layers of the final picture. We want the camera to be on top of display capture, not the other way around. That, that means, see, you can't, you can't, you can't see me. I'm right, I'm right here, but I'm being blocked. So you want the, the, the camera to be on top. And then next here, here's the fun thing. We're gonna add a filter, okay? But in order to make a filter, we're gonna actually have to do something first. This is gonna be, it's not tricky. It involves Canva, but just, just follow me, all right? We're gonna want to add a filter called, an effects filter, not an audio filter, called, where is it? Where is it? There, image mask blend. We're gonna add your image mask blend what it does it it removes everything that you don't want and keeps what you want it's easier to explain when i show you just follow me trust me trust me all right so we're gonna close this for now because we have not created our image mask blend yet because like i said it involves canva but before we can actually go to canva we need a stand we need something to stencil so we don't we don't eyeball uh, or, or we don't imagine what we want to do. So right here, we're going to go right click on your canvas and then we're going to go to full screen projector preview. Then we're going to just hit LG ultra wide. So there, now you see everything on the screen. Then what you're going to do is print screen. You know the print screen, right? Just hit the print screen button. It should be on your keyboard. Uh, okay, hopefully it's on your keyboard if it's not then I'm sorry then you right click close then after that we're gonna go to canva.com if you guys don't have a canva account I recommend you make one it's really good for making thumbnails especially if you don't have applications such as Photoshop so once you sign up or log in to canvas if you already have one you're gonna go to the top right 
where it says create a design and then you're going to add a custom dimension. So remember the candle size, ours was 1920 by 1080, which is your standard full HD on YouTube, 1080p. Then their Canva is creating perfect, then it, it'll be here. It's your untitled design. So you want to exit that. Then remember that print screen we did? All right, I want you to copy paste it. So go to uploads so you can actually see that it's going to be uploaded. You're going to go here and then press control or you can actually right click and then just press paste. All right, and then it should be, it should paste. Yes, allow. And then there you go. Yeah, it does that. Then just wait. Then after you wait a while, see it's loading, but you can actually edit it right now. So there, you want to crop these sides. To crop it, you just simply slide it. Canva is really simple that way. So you can just cut this part off. It doesn't have to be perfect. If you can make it close to perfect or even perfect, that would be good as well. So here we have this 1080p. Uh, picture of you <laughs> of me perfect nice and then after that we're gonna actually want to add a element an element like you know the shape that you want to be remember you can be it can be a circle it can be a square it can be a triangle all right so I'm feeling I'm feeling hexagon so here this is the hexagon all right so that you can actually see yourself a little bit drop the transparency to like 88 all right, I want myself to be like in this square. I want to be in, in a square. I want to show my V-neck right here. So perfect. That That's what I, that's the look I'm going for. All right. And then next, very important, this has to be color white. Okay. Has to be color white. It can't be any other color. And then after that, this, you can actually delete that. You don't need that anymore because this, this, that you already have your, template you already know where you want to put the shape remember this can be a circle a triangle a square and then next you want to change the background the background has to be black that's it you're done perfect that's it it's as simple as that then after that just go here to download download it as it doesn't have to be a png jpeg is fine but png is suggested so we're going to do that hit download it's going to tell you where to save the download file put it in a place where you actually remember it and then once it's done, go back to OBS Studio, right? Remember where you saved that, okay? So then the next step, it's really, it's really simple. It's really simple. Just go to Camera Brio. Go back to Filters. Remember we created a filter, your Image Mask Blend. Find that file that you made. So go to Path Browse. We're going to browse for that. And there you go. It's right here, Untitled Design. You don't even have to name it properly as long as it is what it is. Hit Open, and then there. You're in this hexagon. Right, that's six sides. Yeah, perfect. You don't have to adjust anything. It's just done. If you just follow, it should. If you just follow, you know, thoroughly, it should work. And then there, you are now cropped in this nice looking cool shape. You can resize it like this. If you want to get rid of these lines, you can actually crop that, like so. Whoopsie. All right. If you want to avoid that, you can, I recommend actually locking this so that you don't move it anymore. And then you can edit it. That means it's done. Like example for this, see, and then if you unlock it, that's how that works. So you can do this and then uh, this. All right, so that that's cool. Look, so now we can put ourselves here, and now we're in a hexagon, which is really cool. But I want you to take note when you go back to full camera. Uh oh, it's it's not full camera. Where where is my hands? What happened? This is not what I wanted. Yeah, we can fix that. So, yeah, I, I actually just discovered how to fix this recently, and I'm going to share it with you. It's really simple. It's really, really simple. Barely an inconvenience. So we're going to go to filters. We're going to actually delete this. We don't, we don't need this anymore. And we're going to close so that this is this. We're going to go to transform, uh, reset transform so that we're back to this. All right, perfect. So if we go back to full camera, it's the same. All right, that's good. Next, we're going to want to right click on our camera here in this so scene source. Uh, and then we're going to go to group selected items. This is the trick. When you group a selected item, and then we're going to add a filter to the group, not the camera, but to the group. We're going to add a filter to the group. It's going to be the image mask blend filter. Hit OK. Browse. Add the file you created in Canva. Close, okay, boom, and then you do the thing where you adjust it to where you want yourself to be. Like, I want to be right, right there. Perfect, lock it, and then done. 
and then when we go back to full camera it's still full camera so there you guys have it that that's basically it and then these are your scenes now so you can go from full camera hey how's it going this is obs studio i want to show you that thing right there and there. it's perfect so hopefully you did learn something and but we're not yet done remember this is gonna be a thorough overview of obs studio so we're gonna go to audio mixer next so for audio mixer uh it's very simple you right click anywhere or you can even right click here or click this here we're gonna go to advanced audio properties so this is your advanced audio properties so for remember for tracks we're gonna start with tracks on the on this on this right side right here that one so for tracks we're gonna actually disable everything here first because what how I do it is I record all the audio on track one so they're layered in one track all right I'll make a separate video that basically explains how this works but just follow me for now uh, and then for desktop audio I always make it two just two so that every track the only track on uh, the only audio track on two is the desktop audio that's it for track three these are like layers of audio basically so when you put this in your audit eh, eh, editing software there'll be layers of audio tracks that you can actually edit per track so you have full control which is really good it's good to have full control so for your mic you want that on three for your brio i don't i don't use the mic on brio so i'm actually gonna what you call this i'm gonna deactivate that uh there's a simple way to do that and then for monitoring audio monitoring uh, i like to monitor and output this and monitor and output this because so that when you're actually how i record sometimes or if I, you do record or if you just want to listen and make sure that you actually hear yourself so right now i do this and i can actually hear myself which is perfect so i'm not now monitoring my voice i can hear it uh, it's about good yeah i can make it louder we're gonna actually work on that because oh oh i hear a fan i think i hear a fan all right we might have to add some noise canceling so yeah it's good to monitor and output sometimes that way you can actually you know make adjustments as you go also if you're listening to music you can you know feel the music while you're editing which is actually good <laughs> all right so for tracks for brio we're actually going to cancel that so this is how that this is set up so that's cool now next we're going to actually go to we're going to mute this because we're not using that to even double that we're going to do we're going to make it zero mute it and then we're going to hit settings and then we're going to lock volume so that we can actually change that we can actually change the mute but we can't change the volume so we don't mess with that and then uh unhide all vertical layout advanced audio properties and then next is uh, filters so for desktop audio uh i don't like it peaking sometimes because audio does get too loud so the i only add one filter to desktop audio which is a limiter uh, i like setting my limiter to negative six between or negative nine uh, for desktop though, I like dropping it down. So the lower the filter, I mean the lower the number, I mean the higher, it's negative. Anyway, if it's like, if it's this, if it's negative 60, that's like really low. And if it's zero, that's really high. <laughs> so hopefully that makes sense. So we're going to stick to negative 9 for this uh, release, just leave it at 60. And then, so now the audio doesn't cap all the way in the red zone. We want to avoid it from clipping we don't want that we don't want audio clipping now for your mic there's a lot of things you'd want to do for your microphone but first we'll add a limiter uh, six is fine we can actually drop it to negative five that's cool too uh, we'll add another filter uh, for this we're gonna actually add a gain so that it actually picks up more I normally depend it depends on your microphone and on how far your microphone is from your mouth if you're really close to your microphone this may not be needed but in my case, since I have it set up up here, I want it to be like at around 7. So 7 is good. Then another filter I'd like to add would be a... Where is it? Where is it? Noise suppression. Normally when you just add noise suppression, it works fine. But in my surroundings, I actually have to bring this up to negative 20. Alright. The audio does get tend to sound weirder when you mess with this a lot. So don't mess with it only a little, okay? Just just a little. 
Alright, and then the last one would probably be a compressor. Uh, just add a compressor, and then these settings are fine, as is. You can mess with it, I recommend you do, just to figure out what audio you actually want. But having a compressor there actually makes sure that your voice is actually equal throughout the recording, and it just, just ups the quality, which is what we want. So there you go, that's your audio mixer. Just, just, just the basics, just the basics. For your scene transitions, this is fade. So when you see transit, see see that it fades. When you see transition, fade, fade, fade. But we just need cut because we're gonna be editing everything in Premiere. All right, so just cut, cut, cut. So that way it's more cleaner. And then for your controls, this is how you start recording. You just hit the start record button, and then here on the bottom right over there, it's recording now. The cool thing with OBS Studio compared to other OBS variations like Streamlabs OBS. Or OBS Classic is there is no pause button <laughs> there but here there is which is really beautiful really really beautiful so you can pause so now we are being paused and then you can go to the bathroom do your thing go to the groceries go on a vacation come back next week and then continue where you left off and then there you have it you are now recording again from where you left off without wasting storage which is really really wonderful so that is an amazing thing about this so i think that pretty much just sums up everything here now there's one thing i want to tackle so we can stop recording remember we did Control shift r so that will stop it and then there it's now auto remuxing so it was an mkv file auto remuxes to mp4 it'll be saved in the same file destination that you left it at now we're going to actually go to tools that's for a different video this is more some some more advanced stuff so we're gonna skip that scene selection all right so scene selection is really really interesting so if we create a new scene selection say new hit ok all the scenes that you just made will be gone I mean you can make a new scene uh, you can make new sources you can add different things like okay for this I want to add text and then for the text I want it to be say like hello then helio hel perfect and then oh i i'm i don't want i want to do something else i want to go back to the scene that i just created and it'll just be all here perfect waiting for you so this is good especially if you're doing different projects that require different scene setups that way you don't have this whole section down there filled with scenes that you have to oh what was this project so yeah that just gets complicated so it's nice to actually use this and integrate it in your work flow it's just better that way and then for profile profile is also another important thing i recommend you do uh you just okay so we'll make a new profile uh, we'll call this new profile i'm just new perfect so new profile actually doesn't change the scenes it changes the profile so for instance you have um you're recording for instagram stories so you want it to be uh in a vertical landscape layout so what you want to do for that so we're gonna go see this is even back to simple so we're gonna go back to advanced recording so yeah this this should be fine so we're gonna use add back new so basically you want to set it up you want to set up settings all over again general should be because it's it's a different it's a different layout output to the same see this is 160 we want to bring this to 330 audio all right at least this needs to be 48 then we're gonna have to restart that video so for video we want to go landscape so we're gonna go 1080 by 1920 you can actually type it as long as there's that x don't forget the x all right so there and then this should automatically do that we're gonna go 60 frames uh lang sauce and then we're gonna hit apply okay uh no we don't want to restart yet and then there now we're landscape then we're just gonna you know mess with this a little bit we're gonna move you here because we're now in landscape mode say we do this oh wait wait yeah this is gonna mess up the scene but okay just for just for purposes of education we're gonna do this okay so there so this is your new scene this is your capture we're gonna do this we should have actually duplicated that scene that would have been better but well what can you do wait can you control Z no you can't so there so now you are in, you're doing Instagram stories, what's up IGTV, or even YouTube stories, what's up YouTube stories. 
and then okay you're done making youtube stories for the day you want to switch back to a different profile you go back to your untitled profile and then there it's set up okay yeah because it's yeah this is it then you have to set this up again <laughs> yeah uh, I'll do a separate video again on profiles and scene collection. Basically, this video that I'm creating is incorporates everything that I think is basic and I know into one video. I know it's not ideal. It's this is probably really long right now. And if you're watching it till the very end, you are awesome. And hopefully, you did learn something. Remember, guys, OBS Studio is a tool that i highly recommend you learn it's going to be useful in your journey as a youtuber you're going to probably use it most if not all the time because that's how really important or how how effective obs studio is especially for us youtubers to be able to share uh, what we want to the world <laughs> all right so we're I'm going to be making a playlist here for more advanced OBS Studio videos, I'm gonna, you know, I really want to teach you guys in the way that I taught myself, and in a way that's actually simple and easy to understand. That's what we're going for. And if there's anything you want to ask, any videos you want me regarding OBS Studio as a YouTuber, content creator, and creative entrepreneur, just leave a comment in the comment section below. The next video is gonna be about OBS Studio, about how to auto stop recording. And how to actually get like for instance nine minutes of exact recording because there's a trick to it that makes your life it's so efficient it's just it just makes your life easy it's really good for your the hashtag nine minute project as well you wait for it it's gonna be the next video this coming Wednesday hope you guys did enjoy this video and found something useful even if it's just one percent until the next one thank you